<laughs> Welcome! That's right, Sai and I, Jules Gill, have teamed up to bring you 25 mind-blowing things you didn't know about Resident Evil 4, arguably the best Resident Evil game in the series and, dare I say it, of all time! Yes, everybody loves Resident Evil 4, but don't expect the same old facts that you see everywhere, like how early versions of the game became Devil May Cry and Haunting Ground and so on. There is a lot more interesting trivia bubbling underneath the undead surface. As I'm Jules, and I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com, and this is Resident Evil 4 25 Mind-Blowing Things You Didn't Know. Number 25, Shinji Mikami's only sequel. Shinji Mikami acting as director of Resident Evil 4 doesn't sound that surprising considering it's the series he's most associated with, however a deeper dive is where things get interesting. The so-called godfather of survival horror might have directed the original Resident Evil and its 2002 remake, but beyond that he's only ever acted as a producer. This is true of many franchises he's kicked off like Dino Crisis and The Evil Within. Mikami has never directed a sequel with the exception of Resident Evil 4. Capcom's original choice of director for the game was Hideki Kamiya who had directed RE2, but his take on RE was too action heavy and yes became Devil May Cry. Thus after years of trialing various versions Mikami got in the director chair for the only sequel of his career. Number 24 Mikami's Head so Resident Evil 4 was part of a slate of titles designed to boost the hardware sales of the Nintendo GameCube. The Capcom 5, as they were known, were exclusives for the little purple box and Resident Evil 4 was among them. However, with a masterpiece on their hands and the Cube's relatively small install base, the company wanted to bring the title to the PlayStation 2. Mikami desperately opposed the idea, threatening to quit Capcom if it went ahead and saying in an interview that he would cut off his own head if it happened. Now, Considering that he couldn't stop the inevitable, we have to assume that he was being facetious. Still, to make fun of this, the director's next title, God Hand, would reference this by including a racing dog by the name of Mikami's Head. Number 23. It was originally developed for PS2. Capcom's relationship with Nintendo around this period was by no means bad, but announcing that Resident Evil was finding a new exclusive home with the Big N was a shocking move. By 1999, Resident Evil 4 had already begun development for the PlayStation 2, but Mikami and his team found themselves frustrated with the limitations of the console. As such, the figurehead for the franchise I shopped around. He attended a meeting with Microsoft on Christmas Day 2000 to discuss a working relationship but it didn't go well at all. Nintendo were the last port of call and the GameCube specs were impressive. Again RE4 did eventually come to PS2 although the Xbox wouldn't see the title until its 2011 Xbox 360 port. Number 22 German Censorship An iconic image for Resident Evil 4 is the sight of Leon grappling with a possible decapitation via a chainsaw. Now it's no big secret that Japan's different laws about violence in media meant that the decap animation was removed for that reason, as has become standard for the series. However, Germany is also a country with a long history of censorship. Resident Evil 4 launched in Deutschland without the side games Assignment Ada and The Mercenaries, which was pretty bad enough, but it meant that the unlockables for those games, which included the Chicago typewriter Tommy Gun, were absolutely broken. This was later fixed in the Wii port. Also removed from the German version is the unique jump scare in Chapter 5-1, affectionately called Oven Man by fans for the potential connotations to the Holocaust. Yeah, probably playing it safe there. Number 21. Paul Mercier plays Leon and the Merchant. Taking up the role from the late great Paul Haddad, Paul Mercier made the perfect Leon S. Kennedy for the tone that Resident Evil 4 was going for. A cocky quasi badass who fell into the odd cheesy one-liner here or there, for many people his performance makes RE4's Leon the first Leon that they think of. He later appeared as the character in the Dark Side Chronicles as well as the CGI film Degeneration. But Leon wasn't Mercia's only performance in the game, and he's also the voice of our hero's most trusted ally. Yes, behind the strange cockney snarl of the merchant is the same man as our protagonist. So not only did Mercia get to deliver all of Leon's dialogue, he also got to ask you what you were buying. Number 20. The Merchant was almost in Resident Evil 6. But there are many unanswered questions about the merchant, mainly who is he, where did he come from, is he infected, and where is he getting all of these rocket launchers I keep buying? And of course there's the other question of what happened to him next? Did he go down with the island when it exploded? Well actually, the merchant was planned to return to the series later down the line, albeit in an even more joking capacity. Amongst the concept art design for Leon's possible costumes in Resident Evil 6's mercenary mode, there exists a sketch of the merchant, or well, specifically, Leon carrying him like a bloody backpack. And sorry, we got a boring pirate costume and not this, absolutely criminal. Number 19. The Merchant's Legacy Despite his lack of returning appearances, of all the things in Resident Evil 4 that stay with people, 
Therefore, it seems that the merchant's what are you buying catchphrase is one of the most memorable. Not only does the Duke say this in Resident Evil Village, remarking it as something an old friend used to say, but developers outside of Capcom have paid homage to Resi 4 by slipping this phrase into their games. Rodin in Bayonetta drops it and tells players he heard it in a game once, and a shopkeeper in League of Legends Howling Abyss will also ask the player what they're buying and selling in a similar fashion. Borderlands 2 even has an achievement entitled What Are You Buying for Spending Enough Credits? He might have only one appearance, but the merchant lives on in gaming history. Number 18. References Outside of Gaming It's not just games that have made reference to Resi 4, as the title has also given the nod in various TV shows and films, in background images and the like. However, the game got a very big shout-out in one of the most critically acclaimed TV shows ever. In the Breaking Bad episode 38 Snub, which is the second episode of season 4, the characters of Badger and Skinny Pete are discussing the best video game zombies, with nobody telling them that, um, actually the Gnados in Resident Evil 4 aren't technically zombies. Well, six years after this episode aired, CGI film Resident Evil Vendetta gave the nod back, where Chris Redfield remarks that his squad aren't talking about Breaking Bad for once, and one of them calls it a masterpiece. Number 17. Familiar Capcom Music The first of the Capcom 5 titles to release was a futuristic shooter by the name of Piano 3. This game was also directed by Shinji Mikami, with Shushaku Uchiyama credited as composer, something that is also true of Resident Evil 4. However, the game doesn't just share a composer with Piano 3, it outright shares music. In the unlockable Mercenaries mode, each of the five playable characters has their own unique theme song. However, they're not that unique, as these are just reuses of mission tracks from Piano 3's soundtrack. This may have been done as a cost-cutting measure, but it's hard to argue that when hearing these tracks, most people will think of the legendary RE4 over their true origin in Piano 3, which sadly undersold. Number 16. The Origin of the Save Theme One of Resi 4's most iconic pieces of music is Serenity, a slow and chilling track that plays in the game's various safe rooms. It's arguably one of the more recognisable save themes in the entire franchise. However, like the Mercenary Mode themes, it isn't actually wholly original. The track samples To Burble and Pine by David Torn, a simple but haunting and ghostly melody that appeared on a CD of samples called Pandora's Toolbox. The theme has quite the history in horror, also being used in Devil May Cry, Silent Hill Origins, and the 1997 horror flick The Cube. It's also been used in Monster Hunter, Cowboy Bebop, and Samurai Jack. Perhaps most incredibly though, new metal band Korn used the sample near the end of their track 10 or 2-way. I tell you what, this simple melody gets around, right? Number 15. The Lawsuit Over Its Textures In order to get an idea of how to construct a European-inspired location, RE4's devs were sent to Spain on a research trip. On top of those experiences, they also used the photography of others, perhaps a little too liberally. Judy A. Jerasek filed a lawsuit with Capcom in 2021 regarding unlicensed usage of her work. She had published a book and CD-ROM called Surfaces that was to serve as inspiration for architectural design and artists. Juracek claimed that Capcom had used her photography without permission in several of their games, including RE4. One of these was an image of strained glass which wound up in the game's iconic logo. The matter appears to have been settled out of court as of 2022. Number 14. The Adaptive Difficulty What made Resident Evil 4 so great is that it was just easy to pick up and play. Not only did the genre-defining third-person action feel intuitive, the game was forgiving to players of lesser skill. Specifically, in fact, it pays attention to what you're doing and moves an unseen slider up and down within the game's code. Depending on how well you're keeping the Ganados at bay, behaviours, effectiveness, and even the amount of foes will vary. The game features different difficulties, each with their own minimum and maximum challenge on this scale. Additionally, playing the game on easy mode changes a fair few of the locations drastically, removing rooms from the campaign entirely. Notable examples include the Clock Tower in 4-1 and the Hedge Maze in Chapter 3-2. Number 13. Earliest Inspirations It's fairly common knowledge that Resident Evil 4 went through a spate of different betas before becoming the game we all know and love. The footage of the Hookman version of the game is an interesting insight into the supernatural direction RE4 could have taken. What's intriguing about these early looks is actually the inspiration for them. Writer Yasuhisa Karamura has said that one of the influences for these early ideas was the 1990 psychological thriller Jacob's Ladder, a film which coincidentally also heavily 
heavily inspired Silent Hill. Additionally, Resident Evil 4's early development was defined by the Japanese word mogaki, which Karamura described as a situation in which you try to wriggle with your whole body in fear but cannot escape. Arguably, this is still one way to describe the overwhelming feeling of the Ganado Horde in the final game. Number 12. Ashley Graham's face model was in the commercial. Ashley's screams of help as she's thrown over a Ganado's shoulder and marched towards the exit are one thing that many gamers could probably do without experiencing again. Well, for the Nintendo Wii version, it was apparently a bloody selling point, so much so that they got Ashley Graham herself to reprise her role for the commercial. Not the voice actor Caroline Lawrence, who you might also know as SpongeBob's Sandy Cheeks, but Ashley's face model Brooke Elizabeth Matteson. Aside from some incredibly awkward and uh, cringy acting, the advertisement itself is actually pretty fun, with Ganados entering the real world to steal Matteson away and her partner taking them down with a Wiimote. But see, this could have all been solved quickly if the couple in question had a dumpster in their front room for Ashley to hide in. Come on, it's so obvious. Number 11. Ashley's Beta Costume The recent run of Resident Evil remakes have been really clever in using concepts that originally hit the cutting room floor. For example, in RE2, Leon's casual look with the jacket seems to be carried over from artwork from the original game's development, and the same can be said about Ada's big brown definitely not a spy coat. Mr. X's newfound love of headwear is actually based on a sketch for a different tyrant from Resident Evil Outbreak. The latest of these revivals is Ashley's look. In the files of RE4, gamers found an alternative costume for the president's daughter of a red coat and scarf. This appears to have been the basis for her new look in the remake, a further great callback for diehard fans to appreciate. Number 10. Leon's Referential Armory Resident Evil 4 has a lot of great guns to pick from, and a lot of these great guns have secrets of their own. For example, the Killer 7 Magnum is straight up named after the Capcom 5 title of the same name. It's based on an AMT hardballer, which is seen in the 1984 classic The Terminator, and Resi loves a movie nod in its weapons, so much so that the minigun wielded by that certain Ganado is the M134, seen in both Terminator 2 and Predator. The Broken Butterfly's description is also a nod to it being a classic revolver Magnum, with its description stating, this will make anyone's day, being a rather on-the-nose tribute to sudden impact. Finally, Leon's handgun Matilda is named so for the character in the 1994 film Leon the Professional, and not as I thought for so many years as a child after the house robot from Robot Wars. Yeah, I, I was a bit stupid then. Still am. But this also might explain why the toughest difficulty in the game is also called Professional Mode. Number 9. Ada Wong's Claim to Fame Continuing with Resident Evil's love of cinema, it's worth mentioning that the inspiration for the character of super spy Ada Wong is the protagonist of 1990 Luke Besson flick La Femme Nikita. In fact, the title screen for Ada's campaign Separate Ways is a recreation of the film's poster. More than that though, Ada Wong has a very special piece of trivia that makes her unique in the RE universe. Across the six Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil movies, many video game characters come and go as they all play second fiddle to Millie Jovovich's Alice. Among them is Ada, who appears in Resident Evil Retribution, played by Chinese actress Lee Bingbing. However, Bingbing's dialogue was dubbed in the edit by none other than Resi 4 Ada voice actress Sally Carhill, making her the only actor that has reprised her role in the live action films. Number 8. Ashley is actually tougher than you think. During Resident Evil 4's campaign, there's a small stretch of time where you play as Ashley and must escape some hooded cultist Ganado to get to safety. And while there are a few oil lamps to throw around, Ashley is unarmed and defenseless. Except, well, that's not entirely true. You see, in Resi 4, it's possible to stun enemies if they just so happen to be on the receiving end of a door that you're kicking open. This will throw up a prompt that allows you to perform a melee attack. However, it's not just Leon that can do this, and rather incredibly, Ashley is able to pull off Mr. Kennedy's trademark Mark German suplex as well if you time it right. Capcom sadly became aware of this oversight and patched it out of later releases. So if you want to see Ashley prove that she's more than just a damsel in distress, you'll have to dig that GameCube out of storage. Number 7. A Slice of Classic Survival Horror Speaking of this section of the game, most people don't realise that it plays out differently depending on what region you're in. Of course, Resident Evil 4's gameplay style was a dramatic shift from the titles of old. Even the development team were unsure about it, but it's safe to say it paid off. At the very least, in Japan, they paid homage to the games that came before it. This short playable Ashley section is functionally the same in the Japanese version, except that it plays out through a series of fixed cameras. It's not known why this was changed for other regions, perhaps consistency, but it's a loving nod to that classic survival horror style. Number 6. Ingrid Hunnigan Now, RE4 is home to many, many great characters, but one that often gets overlooked is Ingrid Hunnigan. Hunnigan is Leon's informant and has gone on to become a staple in the series, appearing basically whenever Leon does. Despite 
this, she's not all that memorable because all we ever see of her in Resi 4 is her face in the MGS-style codec phone conversations. However, it turns out that despite being restricted to this little window, Hannigan does have a full character model, and gamers who broke the camera of the PC version of Resident Evil 4 discovered that the scenes render the character models for everyone involved and just drop them behind a weird codec frame. Seems a rather tad unnecessary, but it's very interesting all the same. Number 5. The Silencer Compared to some other games in the series, there's not a lot of cut content in Resident Evil 4's code that data miners have extracted over the years. That being said, what there is is certainly interesting. Keen RE4 Mercenaries players will remember the oddity that was the silencer that was part of Wesker's loadout. It was the only place the weapon upgrade appeared, although that wasn't always the intention. Within the code are two silencers designed for the campaign, specifically for most of the handguns and TMP submachine gun. Early gameplay footage of RE4 Remake has shown us Leon crouching and pulling off a stealth kill, neither of which are mechanics from the original game, so one has to wonder if there's going to be more to this. Maybe the silencer could see a return. Number 4. Chainsaw Maniac one of Resident Evil 4's most recognisable pieces of iconography is its use of the chainsaw. And here's a fun fact, the name of the enemy that wields one as a weapon is simply Chainsaw Ganado, but fans have been calling him Dr. Salvador for so long that nobody's really questioned it. Of course, both the GameCube and the PlayStation 2 had the weird chainsaw-shaped controllers as a brilliant piece of marketing, but the PS2 game also had its own browser-based spin-off. Chainsaw Maniac was a mini-game stylized on the Game & Watch where the player would fight off waves of Ganado as Tiny Little Leon. It's possible to still find this on the internet with a little digging, but it'll hardly keep you as entertained as the main game. So the next time that somebody tells you that they played every Resident Evil game, ask them about Chainsaw Maniac. Number 3. Surviving the Chainsaw You'd think that after all this time that there would be no new tips to learn about RE4, but that's simply not true. In February 2023, a video started circulating online showing that it was possible to survive one of the most feared attacks in the whole game, that being the gruesome decapitation at the hands of Chainsaw Ganado. As devastating as it is memorable, this can be a real run killer. Providing you have full health, surviving this in one piece is apparently as simple as hitting the pause button. It takes some very specific timing, but it's possible to confuse the game, which results in Leon shrugging off the rotating blades like they're nothing. Ah, tis but a scratch. Number 2. Louise Can Kill Leon Whilst apparently Leon can survive the seemingly impossible thanks to clever pausing, he also has a few unique death animations that are worth seeing, and one of them is at the hands of his own comrade. You see, during the cabin defense scenario, where Leon has to team up to fight off the Ganado horde, it is possible to upset your fellow survivor if you keep hitting him with your shots, and if you do this enough time, you'll be treated to a scene where he just basically has enough of you and puts you down himself. Of course, another popular example of hidden death animations is shooting the water in the lake to rile up Del Lago. Your Leon-shaped dinner is then served, and it apparently came bloody knocking. And number one, the most ported game in the series. Capcom either lock a game on a system forever and fans watch it disappear into history or they spit it out onto as many formats as possible. Resident Evil's mainline entries are pretty prevalent and RE4 is far and away the most re-released game in the franchise. In fact, outside of games like Pac-Man and Tetris that are simple enough to basically appear on anything with a screen, Resident Evil 4 is one of the most ported titles in history. With the most recent VR version, RE4 has been released on around 15 consoles from the GameCube and PS2 to the PC and an obscure device called the Zebo. It's so ubiquitous in fact that the remake sets a precedent, making it possible to buy both the 2023 and 2005 version of the game on the same systems with the likes of PC, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. And there we go my friends, that was Resident Evil 4 25 mind-blowing things you didn't know. Thank you so much Sai for inviting me on to go through this tour de force that I've turned into a tour de farce as we've disemboweled ourselves to spread our juicy love all over this very, very scary series. It's been an absolute pleasure, but before I go, just want to say treat yourself well, big love to you, and remember, above all else, you're a massive ledge. Now let's get our hands on the Resident Evil 4 remake, shall we? Oh, baby!